What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today we are back with another build guide and boy do I have a good one for you guys. Today we are playing Blizzard, which is what I believe to be not only S tier, but the best build for the Sork for Season 3 of Diablo 4, okay? Through extensive testing of all the builds that we've been playing, uh, Blizzard just seems to be not only the most comfortable and a nice flow of a build, but the damage is kind of outrageous and I don't even have the best gear for it yet. So I'm going to break down everything that I have for the build, the skills, the gear, Paragon, all that good stuff and just break it down for you in this video. So that way you guys have it and then we can kind of showcase a little bit of a T100 at the end. So let's go ahead and break this down um, and just talk about a few things and some options here. So when it comes to blizzard blizzard is going to be our main damage uh dealing skill we are going to have no basic whatsoever i do want to shout out and give a big shout out to nick two and uh i can't remember the other guy's name but this build is heavily inspired from them so i just do want to give a big shout out to them i made a lot of changes but the build is inspired by them so big shout out to them okay uh so we got firebolt in here with um to be our first enchantment slot skill so that way we can do some burning damage this is really good because it's going to give us access to a lot of dr like dr from burning or damage to burning enemies this is really good uh then we go down and we grab frozen orb this is going to be our second enchantment skill uh it's what's going to be making things vulnerable okay and then frozen orb always makes frozen enemies vulnerable which is really nice because blizzard is not only going to be chilling but we're going to be freezing enemies pretty constantly so this just makes it easy However, what you can do is if you want to drop Frozen Orb, you can go into Lightning Spear. <clears throat> Lightning Spear is also really, really good. It's not good for an enchantment uh, aspect, but it can be put on the bar. We'll talk about a swap out for that in just a second. But if you want to have Vulnerable, the best ways is Frozen Orb or Lightning Spear. So then we got one point into Potent Warning. This is gonna, just going to help with resistances, which is really nice. <clears throat> this build does struggle with resistances, and I'll break that down in the gear. Uh, defensive skills, we're going Flame Shield into Mystical Flame just for the mana cost reduction because, like, Blizzard does cost a lot. Mine costs 20 before this triggers, so it'd be down to, like, 16 or so. Um, or maybe it's 25% off of the original, which would be 35, which still puts it down to, like, 17, but that's okay. Um, if you don't, if you're not too concerned about mana cost, then just go Shimmering just for the life. We max out teleport here into shimmering just for more DR, and this thing is just always popped. One point into elemental attunement for a chance to reset, because we have every single defensive skill that we can. Three into glass cannon for more DR. We're doing ice armor into shimmering ice armor. Enemies we hit while ice armor is active has a chance to be frozen. So even though we are playing blizzard, which seems to be a range build, we are going to be basically moving in close proximity to all the enemies. So having this as an additional chance to just freeze them, um, with Frozen Orb to make them vulnerable just is really, really nice. Then, of course, we got Frost Nova into Mystical just to make them vulnerable. This is another way to do that. This works really good on bosses. Uh, Conjuration, we're taking one into Align the Elements for DR, as well as maxing Mana Shield and Protection. This is pretty much standard on every sort build. Then we're going to come down and take two points into Icy Veil for barriers to have 10% duration. We're taking Blizzard into Mage's Blizzard so the duration lasts longer. So uh, I'm going to break down why and how Blizzard works in just a second because we only have one point into it. We got one point into Inner Flames as well as Devouring Blaze for more damage. Then we got one point into Deep Freeze. <clears throat> this just allows us to kind of become immune and just reset our cooldowns. If you guys don't know that when all your cooldowns are active, if you double trigger this, like you pop it and then pop it again to where it stops it. It resets all of your cooldowns. I'll showcase this when we go into the T100. But it's really nice. You don't need anything else. You could go up to Prime Deep Freeze if you really want for an extra um, barrier if you need it, but you don't really need it. The, the base one's just fine. We max out Permafrost for more damage, Icy Touch for more damage, as well as Horror Frost for more damage. If you really wanted to go into Frigid, frigid Breeze, um, this kind of just helps us generate more mana. You don't, this is not required. You don't need it. But if you still feel like you're having issues with mana, then you could definitely just take points and do that. We got one point of fiery surge for mana regen. The burning damage is irrelevant. We just use it to get to warmth because with frost or firebolt in here, everything is burning. So we constantly heal. It just makes it really nice when we're running around. 
Now, our key passive of choice is Esu's Ferocity. You guys are probably asking, why is Esu's on here? So, Esu's Ferocity is bugged, okay? Uh, it's bugged right now. I don't know when the devs are going to fix it. So, I'm going to give you an option to this um, when it gets bugged and fixed. So, right now, it says your fire critical strike damage is increased, and then your fire critical strike chance is increased. Okay, right now, the bug is this applies to all elements. So, cold, lightning, etc. Poison, the critical strike damage increase and crit strike chance increase is, inc is applied to all elements. That's why we use it, and that's why we get a nice little scale on our, our ice spike damage. Okay, so if this does get fixed and you it no longer applies to all the elements, what I suggest is you come down and you grab shatter. Okay, shatter is going to be the best key passive that you can do. Um, however, if you still want to stick with this uh, and get just the critical strikes to get like both bonuses, like you can do that, like that's fine, but it's only going to apply to your burning. So I've tested the build without Esus <clears throat> just to make sure if that does get patched that you guys can swap over so you're not just kind of left in limbo. But Shatter is definitely the best one that works after freeze expires, enemies explode um if they were frozen so this is the best one you could try avalanche however on a lucky hit your frost skills have a chance to make your next cast of ice shards frozen orb or blizzard consume no mana which is nice and the increased damage um is irrelevant right the chance for it to double against vulnerable enemies is fine 20 percent chance but again we're not doing damage with ice shards frozen orb or blizzard and i'll explain that once we get into the gear pieces so avalanche really doesn't work so our only option is shatter the build works just fine we do lose some damage here but again if this is if this gets fixed then we're forced to use shatter because neither one of the overflowing or veers mastery works so that is the build for our skills let's go check out the gear really quickly so mine's more of a high-end build minus one piece of gear which i'm still trying to find desperately not only for blizzard but for meteors as well so best in slot is harlequin crest okay you do have some options here you can definitely swap into god slayers this is really really good if you want to do this especially against bosses um and then on Dario's, i've tested i've tested this which is actually really nice you get the fourth talrasha stack from the poison and it works just fine another key trick that you can do is you can swap into on Darius, right like you swap in Darius in and then you get the proc from the poison and then you just swap back to shako and you're good and the stacks will stay up so you get the the perma buff which is really nice so out of those otherwise you could just use a regular help me if you have none of those prioritize cooldown prioritize max life prioritize dr if you can get it uh, next, we have a regular chess piece here. We got Juggernauts. This is just OP. I love this ability. It's my new favorite ability. Um, if you guys are not a big fans of Disobedience, then Juggernauts is definitely the one. I actually have a low roll of uh, Disobedience here. I have better ones, but you can see that my armor is still capped, right? So, like, it, it's, it gets to 11,000. I really need this to be 13,000, so I'll probably put a new Juggernauts on here. But once you get fighting and stuff, everything goes up. But... Yeah, my armor being boosted right now to a constant 11,000 or almost 12,000 is fine. I do need to get this to 13,000 though, so I'll probably put a new um, Juggernauts on there just for an extra, like extra 1,500. Uh, into the gloves, we got Conceited because we always have a barrier. Make sure you prioritize Intelligence, Attack Speed, Chris Strike Chance, etc. Um, the Lucky Hit to Restore is nice, but you, it's not required. Tabalt's Will, huge here every single time. That's why we have Maxed Out Teleport. Every single time we become unstoppable, we get 50 mana, which is huge. And then the 40% increased damage is just cannot be ignored. So teleport as well as flame shield is what's going to make us unstoppable, which teleports cooldown is under five seconds. And this gets reset really quickly. Uh, for the boots, I like ghost walkers. I always prefer ghost walkers. Um, I really like this because it just allows me to be unstoppable, but more importantly, I get to move freely through enemies. So when I'm just spamming my skills, I can just move three and I do, like I cannot be hindered and I just love that. However, Esu's uh, heirloom is really good if you want increased crit strike chance. This is perfectly fine. You can do it for sure. Um, the build does struggle a little bit again, like I said, with resistances. So if I put this on here, I do lose my poison res. So if I was gonna do Esu's, I'd maybe just do on Darius. So I get to cap again, 
like this setup would be pretty good um however like shaco is definitely best in slot but i prefer ghost walkers i don't really it doesn't matter for me for the extra chris strike chance um i mean i do go up to about 38 percent but still the build um scales on chris strike so but yeah you can work that out as it is you can change some things in the paragon board to kind of match your resistances um in the weapon slot we're doing a dagger we're going to be up close you don't necessarily need a wand because we're not really triggering anything lucky hit so get a dagger intelligence all stack chris strike damage vulnerable damage all good you could even do um like close damage or something anything that's additive or multiplicative this is really good but we got frozen tundra here is the power while deep freeze is active which is our ultimate ice spikes explode we don't really care about that that's nice but we really have this for the ice spikes have 50 percent explosion radius so that's really why we have that on there into our offhand we have storm swell okay storm swell is really good it's a huge damage multiplier however what you can do because we are rocking Esu's ferocity is you can rock ancient flame ancient flame uh while both key passives are active you get increased attack speed so what a lot of people like to do is the animation of blizzard some people don't oh crap i triggered my pet some people don't like how slow the animation is for blizzard so it makes it to where you know it can feel a little clunky it can be a little you know you can't really spam the damage i don't mind it so i like storm swell just for even more damage but ancient flame is super good here as well uh in our amulet we got glacial okay before i get explain kind of why we have glacial but we have blue rose uh for even more damage and just more importantly mana cost reduction here in crit strike damage we're not really proccing the lucky hit it is nice when that does happen but we have it for the mana cost reduction for sure and then of course tau rasha is just for even more damage here with all of our elements now in the amulet you want glacial i have a very bad movement speed roll but prioritize movement speed mana cost and devouring blaze just makes us do even more damage um glacial says when you cast blizzard it will appear like periodically spawn exploding ice spikes this is where all of our damage comes from guys that is why in in my skill tree i only have one point into blizzard because blizzard itself is not doing any damage okay blizzard isn't the thing that's getting scaled and doing a bunch of damage it's the ice spikes so you only need one point in here so that way we can put other points in other places so just understand that all of your damage is coming from the ice spikes that's getting scaled but and not blizzard itself okay now you can see i have rubies topaz and amethyst in here to kind of help with resistances um but you can change that in the paragon board so let's go into the paragon board i'm just gonna kind of talk about the nodes and stuff that i have um, I will tell you that you can take points out of this area here, or you could take points out of this area down here if you really want to kind of come over here to cap resistances. This really does help. But my um, glyphs of choice are going to be destruction, elementalist for more damage, destruction for more damage, flame feeder for more damage since we're doing burning, reinforce for DR, control since we are actually chilling them. This is another 20% because they're always going to be uh chilled or frozen which is really nice then we got stalagmite which helps us with our ice spikes and then we got territorial for even more damage and damage reduction up close okay so there's not really a whole lot of interchange here you could do enchanter i'm still trying to find a spot through this but um i can't really find a spot in here to do it so we're just kind of stuck i guess you could replace stalagmite if you really wanted to and do enchanter if that's something you would like um i don't know how well that would be all of this the planner and everything is going to be down in the description below guys but yeah the build is very very strong so that's kind of what the pieces we have is i'm going to go through and just showcase right now just a nice little t100 and just kind of show you how um how we can kind of run the build it's it's very very easy now when we get in here there is one key piece that i'm missing and that is uh what is it star oh my gosh it's the it's the uh the uber unique the uber unique start not starlight um starfall what is it starfall shoot the ring of starless skies so the ring of starless skies here is going to replace a blue rose whenever we get it okay it's the uber unique it is going to scale our damage by forty thousand. so just to show you guys let me pull it up here so ring of starless skies 
is gives us lucky hit chance, which we don't care about, but we get this crit strike chance, crit strike damage, and core skill damage, which is additive. It, it makes our damage even more, but more importantly, spending our primary resource, which is what we're doing with Blizzard, not only is going to reduce our cost by 40%, but we're going to get a flat 40% increased damage, and it's all multiplicative. So Ring of Starless Skies is going to be huge here. We're going to replace Blue Rose for that once we actually get it, and I can't wait to get it and also test it with Meteor. But yeah, so do that. Um, huge swap there if you have it. Now, how this build works is pretty simple. We're just going to pop all of our stuff. We're going to spam Blizzard, and we're just going to kind of dash through this. So... Kind of how we're not going to be like slowing down. We want to just throw our blizzards, right? And you're just going to kind of move. Because the ice bikes do take a second to start spamming. So, like, you can see I move here, and if I come back, now they start hitting. So, when you're speed running this, you just kind of just flow the, through this no problem. Like you just, you just spam your spikes, go, right? You don't need to worry about... All the monsters behind the ice spikes when you're going. You don't have to stand there and wait for them to die. You just kind of let your spikes go and you just kill everything. It's great. These constructs are super annoying, by the way. Super annoying. They can one-shot you. It's, it's so bad. But yeah, this can do all content, all the bosses, guys. This build is absolutely insane. And the damage is going to be into the millions after we uh after we get all of our glyphs to one or 21 and then when we get starless skies that's really where the build just kind of takes off but yeah you just you just spam your blizzard and you just move you just move through everything just dies because the monsters are going to be attracted to blizzard see you can see i don't even have to stick around because they're just gonna die the build is very easy to play. It's very fluid. It is not a hard build to play. You just run through and spam, no problem. It is not a big deal whatsoever. And again, just to show you the trick, if we throw on Dariel's on, right? And we get our proc. If we get our pro our poison proc, right? You'll see this number go to four if we get it. We just needed to proc. Alright, so we just got the poison to proc, so then you can come back in, swap back. Because the way Tal Rasha's works is as long as you're dealing damage, all of those elements are just going to reset. So as long as you're dealing damage, you get that fourth buff. Super strong. Just an easy swap if you don't want to actually run on Darius. But the life seal is really good. It's not bad at all. It's really not too bad. You can definitely use it if you don't have Shaco, which is perfectly fine. And hopefully we don't, like, it's still, like, our Blizzard's still doing damage. And we get that nice little buff. Right? You just kill every, oh. Something hit me. Was that one of the constructs? And everything just dies. You just leave it and go. And I will say that this is probably the, like, maybe besides Meteor, if you can get your cooldown low enough. But this is probably the best build for when you're doing these vaults for the end game here. For these end rooms. Because you can just spam Blizzard everywhere. And they all just die. Right? And you have your oh, your oh shit button with your ultimate. Like, look at that. Everything just, just melts. And I don't even have Starless Skies on. Like, the build just slaps, dude. You can pop your ultimate. Get your oh shit, right? Watch out for the after effects. It's just super easy. The build just the build just walks through T100s. It destroys all the bosses. It can solo Duriel, even in a four-man group. It's just absolutely fantastic, man. It's really nice to see that uh, you know, Blizzard is kind of back from season one. Um, I do wish that Meteors was a little bit stronger, and I think it will be with um, Ring of Starless Skies. Just because of how strong this build is when it takes off. But yeah, that's the build, guys. That is a blizzard. Everything is going to be down in the description below. So like the video, comment down there. Let me know what you guys think. This is probably, the, again, the best build that the Sork has. Um, it's unfortunate that like 
Barbarian and Rogue are so far ahead because Rogue has the combo point. Um, combo point like Bug, and then, of course, Barbarians are just absolutely insane. It still feels like Sork, Druid, and Necro have been ex extremely left behind. So hopefully that changes. But Blizzard is going to be the best build for Sork this season, guys. So like the video again. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.